Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and today is Thursday, November 24th, 2016. It's our Thanksgiving edition, and here's a look at what's coming up. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, we hope you're taking time this Thanksgiving holiday to cherish your families and remember what makes America great. Now I have a dream. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. Let freedom ring, and when this happens... Happy Thanksgiving from the InfoWars Nightly News crew. Welcome back. Joining me in the studio is Darren McBreen, my good friend, and it is Thanksgiving. We've got a lot to be thankful for, but what are we most thankful for, Darren? I'd say thanks, thanks for, for Trump. Trump. Absolutely. Right. I can't feel so good to say, <laughs> let me tell you. Still celebrating, by the way. Yeah, and now let's look at what Trump's going to do in his first 100 days. Today, I would like to provide the American people with an update on the White House transition and our policy plans for the first 100 days. Our transition team is working very smoothly, efficiently, and effectively. Truly great and talented men and women, patriots indeed, are being brought in, and many will soon be a part of our government, helping us to make America great again. My agenda will be based on a simple core principle, putting America first. Whether it's producing steel, building cars, or curing disease, I want the next generation of production and innovation to happen right here on our great homeland, America, creating wealth and jobs for American workers. As part of this plan, I've asked my transition team to develop a list of executive actions we can take on day one to restore our laws and bring back our jobs. It's about time. These include the following. On trade, I am going to issue our notification of intent to withdraw from the Trans-Pacific Partnership, a potential disaster for our country. Instead, we will negotiate fair bilateral trade deals that bring jobs and industry back onto American shores. On energy, I will cancel job-killing restrictions on the production of American energy, including shale energy and clean coal, creating many millions of high-paying jobs. That's what we want. That's what we've been waiting for. On regulation, I will formulate a rule which says that for every one new regulation, two old regulations must be eliminated. So important. On national security, I will ask the Department of Defense and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff to develop a comprehensive plan to protect America's vital infrastructure from cyber attacks and all other form of attacks. On immigration, I will direct the Department of Labor to investigate all abuses of visa programs that undercut the American worker. On ethics reform, as part of our plan to drain the swamp, we will impose a five-year ban on executive officials becoming lobbyists after they leave the administration and a lifetime ban on executive officials lobbying on behalf of a foreign government. These are just a few of the steps we will take to reform Washington and rebuild our middle class. I will provide more updates in the coming days as we work together to make America great again for everyone, and I mean everyone. That's right. He said everyone. He means everyone. Even the cast of Hamilton, I think, is included in this. <laughs> it's pretty but, awesome. But what did he do on that same day? He brought in the heads of like all the mainstream media and basically chewed them a new one. God, I would have. Loved I got to give thanks there. for that. I would have loved to have been there. I, I hope there's video of this because Lester Holt was there. I mean, he just Wolf basically Blitzer, Stephanopoulos, mm -hmm. and he basically reamed them all. He, he, the head of CNN, he chewed him a new one. Said you're a liar, and your whole group is full of liars. And he says he's ashamed of them. It's just great to see somebody talking off the cuff um, when we've had so much political correctness going on Absolutely. in the world. So Absolutely. I'm really happy to see that. What, what are you thankful for with uh, President Trump so far? President well, I'm, I'm just I'm thankful that, that he got in there. Never thought I would live to see the day where we actually brought in an anti-establishment candidate and we win. Yeah. I mean, that's a beautiful thing. And I think if it wasn't for the Internet, 
And if it wasn't for social media, independent media, we'd probably be looking at a Jeb Bush presidency or a Hillary Clinton presidency because it's always been Hillary Clinton and the establishment media versus Donald Trump and the social media, independent media, yours truly, InfoWars. And so I'm very thankful that we actually did it. We've got I a lot of work totally to do, agree. though. A lot of work to we do. We do have a lot of work to do. And there's a lot of uh, misinformation coming out. Kissinger mm -hmm. comes out and says, oh, I think we can mold Trump. Sure. And I think that's total BS. But, you know, then you have the BET founder saying, let's give Trump a chance. So you've got, you know, and black entertainment television. I, I, that's good to see, you know, a leading voice in the black community come out and say, hey, let's give Trump a chance. Let's see what happens. Even Tom Hanks has kind of reversed course and said, you know what? I hope in four years I'm going to be wanting to vote for President Trump after he played like a hick racist in a bunch of these anti-Trump skits. On Saturday Night Live. All, all kinds of weird things going on with celebrities right now. You've got Green Day with their uh, the American Music Awards. No Trump, no KKK, no fascist USA during their live performance. And then on the flip side, what is up with Kanye West lately? He sounds like Alex Jones, and now it looks like he needs to go to a re-education camp or something. Well, you know, <laughs> you, you can't be TWB, Trump while black. Yeah. Um, you, you, have to, you have to toe the line of that, that people like Jay-Z and Beyonce have established, which is back the, uh, the slavery candidate, the pro-mental slavery, the pro-plantation the pro plantation candidate. Democrat plantation. And yeah, so poor Kanye is now, uh, but he's also a workaholic, so that may have something to do with it. But let's hope he doesn't come out and then say, I am sorry, I was. I, I am now a drone. Donald Trump. Hey, but he wasn't afraid to get booed by an entire, a huge audience. So there was a lot of people there. Now, the big news, McBreen, is it came out in the New York Times, Trump drops threat of new Hillary investigation. That was, that's the big headline now. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't believe that. I don't think that's true. And then Joe Biggs came in here and uh, was talking to us. And there's an article now from Fox News that basically says it's wrong. And it, they link to the tweets from this, let's see, her name is Maggie Haberman. And she was there in this meeting that he had with the New York Times. And so everybody's pointing to this, uh, this tweet here. It says, my inclination would be for whatever power I have on the matter is to say, let's go forward. And this has been looked at for so long ad nauseum, talking about a Clinton investigation, a new Clinton investigation. Which I don't like the sound of that. But then you go down a little farther. It says, you know, and he also says, I wants to move forward, and, and, he's, and he's not looking to go back through this. All right, but then Trump says no when asked if he's taking investigations off the table for Clintons, but as he doesn't want to hurt the Clintons. So he's not taking them off the table. He's not saying he's not going to investigate. And really, it's not going to be him doing the investigation. It's going to be Jeff Sessions. New, when new sheriff in town when, when it comes general. to attorney general. New sheriff. Exactly. Uh, well, you know that phrase... Um, are your ears burning? Like I would call my mom sometimes and she would say, are your ears burning? I was just talking about you. Well, I want to know if Donald Trump's feet are burning right now because I'm going to hold Donald Trump's feet to the fire. He made a campaign promise to prosecute Hillary Clinton. And remember, one of the, the more famous or the one, one of the more popular chants during the Trump rallies, lock her up, lock her up. So I really hope that he's going to go after her. One I of hope the more popular shirts, Hillary for Hillary prison. Hillary for prison. I mean, come on. You know, so it was like every fifth person. You know, we saw so many of them at, there at the Trump rallies. I wonder if this isn't some kind of smoke screen, because the more, I mean, if, if let's say Obama has a sense that Trump is really going after Hillary, then the more likely he might pardon her. So maybe he wants to just look like, hey, it's all going to be good. And I think he's going to wait till January 20th and after when he becomes sworn in as president. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's after the inauguration. Then he's going to be free to go after to launch those investigations. And then Kim.com came out and said in a tweet. Substantial new leaks about Clinton crime family can be expected after the inauguration of President Trump. Good. So Ken.com seems to be in the know. He's got some links to the WikiLeaks people. He says he doesn't have any of these emails in, in his possession, but he does say that he knows. I guess he's got some inside scoop of what's going on. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. And right now, Obama's running around saying, oh, we got to worry about fake news. Fake news is the thing to look after. Notice that. It's like all of a sudden they've turned on the faucet for fake news, yet we keep catching them in fake news. We just pointed it out how the New York Times said, oh, he's not going to go after Clinton. Then when you read the tweets, he said he's not taking it off the table. So he never said he's not going to go after him. He just said, we're going to wait and see. He really doesn't want to go through with it, though. He said, oh, I'm going to feel bad about being thrown into that briar patch. I'd like to give her time to heal. Yeah. But, uh, hey, this whole fake news thing is, look, the, the mainstream media is in shock. The establishment media, 
and, and the entire establishment, for that matter, they're in total shock right now because they really did expect Hillary to rig the election and win it. So, and so what and are they resorting our to? They're resorting to things like this new Hamilton controversy that has been around since, you know, since early this week, talking about how the Hamilton cast got up and talked to Mike Pence and how it was so bad. Well, here's my take on this. And then I guess to finish up the show, we're just going to go to a bunch of reports that shows why we're thankful that Trump is our president. Rob Dew with Infowars.com, and I want to weigh in on the Hamilton controversy because I'm sick of hearing about it, for one, and I'd hope to put it to bed with this statement. But first, let's look at what Hamilton star Brandon Dixon said to Vice President-elect Mike Pence back on November 18th. You know, we had a, a, a guest in the audience this evening. <laughs> And I encourage everybody to pull out your phones and tweet and post because this message needs to be spread far and wide, okay? Vice President-elect Pence, we welcome you and we truly thank you for joining us here at Hamilton and American Musical. We really do. We, sir, we are the diverse America who are alarmed and anxious that your new administration will not protect us. Our planet, our children, our parents, or defend us and uphold our inalienable rights, sir. But we truly hope that this show has inspired you to uphold our American values and to work on behalf of all of us. Yeah. All of us. Yeah. Again, we truly thank you for sharing this show, this wonderful American story told by a diverse group of men and women of different colors, creeds, and all. So by the morning of November 19th, this was everywhere, how the cast called out Mike Pence and the crowd was booing him and they made it such a big deal that conservatives were then forced to respond and say, how dare the cast of Hamilton speak out and, and bully Mike Pence? Well, first of all, you just saw it. There was no bullying going on. In fact, he said, hey, let's not boo. I've got a message and everybody record this and put it out on social media. That's what this is about, people. This is about the free expression of ideas. There was nobody being attacked. There was nobody being threatened. So like he just said in the video, we truly hope that this show has inspired you to uphold our American values and work on behalf of all of us. Well, I don't think anywhere during the campaign did Mike Pence or Donald Trump say, hey, make America great again is only for a certain number of people. It's only for this group of people over here. That's what the left tried to portray it as, that it was this racist, sexist, xeno, homophobic guy who was going to get into the presidency. And I'm going to show you in a little bit how that's clearly not the case. But conservative talk show hosts and media then jumped on the bandwagon and piled on and started looking into this guy's past, Brandon Dixon. Oh, he called women hoes. He's done this. He's sexist. He's racist. Where is that getting us? Really? Really? Okay. The right likes to go after the SJWs, and every time they cry about something and talk about them being butthurt. This is clearly a case of the right being butthurt over really nothing. So I want to encourage the right just to let it die. Let this thing die and let's move on with our lives. And the left wants to go, oh, we got Mike Pence. We told him. No, you didn't. They just asked for something that is really already happening. And I'm going to show you this right now. Back in 2000, Donald Trump was interviewed by the gay magazine The Advocate. And he actually attacked Bill and Hillary Clinton for their treatment of homosexuals. In fact, here's an excerpt. So when asked why gays and lesbians should be interested in you as a presidential candidate. Now, this is back in 2000. He said, I grew up in New York City, a town with different races, religions, and peoples. It breeds tolerance and all truth. I don't care whether or not a person is gay. I judge people based on their capability, honesty, and merit. It gets better. Would we see gay people in a Trump administration? I want to see the best and brightest. Sexual orientation would be meaningless. I'm looking for brains and experience. If the best person for the job happens to be gay, I would certainly appoint them. So I think that says it all. And that was back in 2000, 16 years before he actually ran for president. I will do everything in my power to protect our LGBTQ citizens from the violence and oppression of a hateful foreign ideology. Believe me. Another reason I don't think this is a big deal is because 
I, being a theater major, know actors. And actors love applause, they love adoration. That's why they go out for their extended curtain calls. And believe me, they feed off this stuff. Okay, I'm not going to say they're vampires, but they love the applause. And they actually took time from their curtain call to stop and bring up an issue that they thought was important. Well, as you can see, I don't think you need to worry about gays, lesbians, transsexuals being excluded or persecuted from a Trump administration. You really don't. And the right, you really don't need to be getting butthurt about this. Let's all move on. And I think if we all grow up a little bit, we can all help make America great again. This is Rob Drew reporting for Infowars.com and Infowars Nightly News. These are pictures from 1944 of what happened to George Soros's friends and neighbors. You're a Hungarian Jew who escaped the Holocaust by posing as a, a Christian. And you watched lots of people get shipped off to the death camps. I was 14 years old. And I would say that that's when my character was made. It was a tremendous threat of evil. I mean, it was a, a very personal experience of evil. And my understanding is, is that you went out with this protector of yours who swore that you were uh, his adopted godson. Yes, yes. Went out, in fact, and helped in the confiscation of property from the Jews. That's right. I mean, that's, that sounds uh, like an experience that would send lots of people to the psychiatric couch for many, many years. Was it difficult? Uh, not, not, not at all. It was actually probably the happiest year of my life, that year of German occupation. same mainstream corporate media that lied to us throughout the campaign, that faked polls, that colluded uh, with the White House and Hillary to try to rig the debates, has now been caught in their biggest lies yet. And this video presentation, this special report, will absolutely destroy them. Exhibit A. The entire corporate dinosaur media, from the New York Times to the Washington Post, London Guardian, are coming out and saying the campaign is imploding, that the transition team uh, is in total disarray, that everyone is involved in a mass exodus, that they can't hire the 4,000 people needed to take over the executive branch. When in truth, they're going in and purging the executive branch of lobbyists, the number one promise that Donald Trump gave to the American people that he would do as soon as he got into office. So it's not discord when Vice President-elect Mike Pence begins to kick the lobbyist out of the Republican Party. He's telling the henchmen of the special interest that have hijacked this nation, you're fired. You're fired. <laughs> So the collaborator press that works with these multinationals that have hijacked our nation is desperate. They've doubled down on the whole race narrative, but Americans across the political spectrum, regardless of race, color, or creed, or religion, aren't buying it. They love the message of lower taxes and draining the swamp and restoring America's greatness. And Trump means to deliver. So now the new narrative across the board is he's incompetent. He's a joke. He doesn't have a transition team which really means he's kicking all the lobbyists out. So they're trying to then even withdraw support in Washington to make sure that the bureaucracy rebels against him. And that's why it's key for us to support Trump now more than ever, because we've sent him to Washington to do an incredibly dangerous, dirty job. And remember, no matter what Trump does, they're always going to spin it that it's bad. This is the first president in the last 60, 70 years I've seen that actually does what he says he's gonna do by even restricting lobbyists or cutting them back. He is waging war on them. He is delivering in triplicate. So let's look at the facts and see who's really incompetent. We have the media that lied and said he would lose, that got caught giving all the questions to CNN and ABC News and the rest of it. That's all in the WikiLeaks, totally corrupt, trying to deceive the American people. And that same media tells us that Trump is incompetent when he just finished his latest DC hotel 
a year ahead of schedule and massively under budget. And he does that in every other major project he's been involved in. He's known for that. His father was known for that. Look at the energy we saw on the campaign trail. Look at the stamina, breaking all previous records, not just in how many trips he made or how many speeches he gave, but also in the amount of small donations from grassroots people. He is the true populist. Under budget, ahead of schedule. That's what this is. Under budget, ahead of schedule. Let's compare that with Obama. When he got into office, there was $2 trillion missing. And that was in the entire history of the Pentagon going back to the late 1940s. In less than eight years, it ballooned to $6.5 trillion in missing money. Trump under budget, ahead of schedule, Obama tripling the amount of money missing at the Pentagon when he was in office. Under budget, ahead of schedule. That's what this is. And the very same big banks and, and the Clintons behind Obama are the people that got rid of Glass-Steagall. They're the ones that allowed derivatives. They're the ones that basically engineered with the establishment Republicans the massive banker bailout that tagged tens of trillions more of private debt on to the American people. And those debts haven't even been paid back yet. Then let's not forget Obamacare, bipartisanly written by a bunch of central banks and giant multinational insurance companies by the very same establishment Republicans that opposed Donald Trump who worked with Obama to ram it through. If you like your doctor, you can keep it. It's gonna cut your premiums the cost of a telephone or cable bill. All of this was a sick joke, admitted to be a fraud against the American people. And the main architect, Gruber, even bragged that Obama hired him to deceive the American people. So I guess in a way, it's not total incompetency, it's premeditated evil. But how are you liking the skyrocketing premiums? How are you liking the IRS fining you with penalties? How are you liking being raped by the so-called Democratic Party? To get a law which said healthy people are gonna pay in it made explicit the healthy people pay and the sick people get money. It would not have passed. Okay, just like the people, transparent lack of transparency is a huge political advantage, and basically, you know, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever. But basically, that was really, really critical to getting the thing to pass. Now, juxtapose all that criminality, all that mismanagement, all that colluding, all that rigging with what the media is criticizing Trump with. Last week, when he went to D.C. and met with Obama in Congress. He didn't tell the media that he was going to go back to New York. He broke protocol. He didn't let them boss him around and control what he did. But then it got worse. Last night, he went to his favorite steakhouse and didn't tell the media when he did it. This is just outrageous. This is so horrible what he did. He went to a steakhouse with his family. And of course, he got a standing ovation when he came into the packed restaurant that didn't even know he was coming. Oh, and on top of it, he then shook hands for an hour before he ate and promised folks that he was gonna be cutting their taxes, just like he promised me on the phone last week. And I've had the Washington Post, the New York Times, so much the old dinosaur media call me and say, what'd you talk about when you're on the phone with Trump? And I've said, you know what? It wasn't a private conversation, but I'm not gonna share it with you because you're not real media. You're just using me as a prop. I told the New York Times this, to act like you actually interviewed me. You wanna spin and twist. But you know what? I will kind of rub it in and tell them some of the conversation. It was laughing at you and how much fun it was for Trump to ignore you and, 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 and not empower you when you're backstabbing traders that work for foreign banks that are trying to bring this country down. He's doing all this on purpose to show what a joke you are and then to watch you like toddlers throw giant fits. So again, he's continuing to outsmart all of you. And it's not just Alex Jones and Donald Trump that are laughing. Across the internet, folks are just absolutely loving the way he is trolling you stuck up, conceited, sycophantic, traitorous, joke level dirtbags <laughs> who still don't know why you lost the election. And of course, I'm just waiting for when Trump tries to take a vacation around Christmas, which I really think it's 70, he deserves. I mean, he is an Iron Man, but come on, you deserve to spend some time with your family. Wait, they're going to say it's horrible and he's lazy and bad, despite the fact Obama reportedly took almost five months of vacation a year on average. Truly unprecedented. Talk about incompetent. Talk about a lazy ass. Then we've got the EPA with one of the biggest spills in our history. 
They didn't even try to contain it for several weeks because I guess it's okay when the government dumps a bunch of cyanide into rivers. And while Obama was vacationing and Hillary was napping during the floods in Louisiana and Mississippi, who came and visited? Who donated massive amounts of money? Who went through more than a dozen towns and hand delivered the aid directly to the people? <gasps> That's right, the incompetent Donald J. Trump. Speaking of incompetence, we have the vaccine makers of this country who in the 1980s got Congress to pass a law shielding them from liability from their dangerous products. Well, Donald Trump has said vaccines should be investigated, that too many of them are being given, and that he is preparing for investigations into why so much autism is spreading across this country. Again, that's the opposite of the government giving immunity to the drug companies to dump this garbage on the streets. And thank God Donald Trump isn't incompetent and actually cares about America's children. Of course, we all know there's a little bit more than incompetency, and this is part of population control. But when you look at the billions and billions of dollars paid out secretly through the vaccine damage fund that the media tries to keep from the public, it lets you know that the press certainly is incompetent for not doing their job and exposing how deep this rabbit hole goes. But I need to be fair again. When Obama takes overseas vacations at taxpayers' expense, it's not incompetency, it's milking the slaves. I've got to admit it, I am enjoying watching the, the last dying gasp of the corporate media. Uh, it is amazing to see them scramble to try to figure out ways to get the public back on their side. Uh, one of their new initiatives is not just to say Donald Trump's incompetent or a racist. They're also saying fake news got him elected. Uh, when it's mainstream media that's been caught lying and getting us into these wars and claiming Saddam Hussein had WMDs when he didn't, and it was basically only Donald Trump back at the time that was going on Fox News and CNN saying, don't get into these wars. We are joined by Jack Posobiec, the Special Operations Director for Citizens for Trump. He was giving me great intel on election night. All of it ended up coming true. But recently, he went inside of Comet Pizza and Ping Pong and got kicked out. Well, one of the biggest trends on Twitter has been the whole Pizzagate thing, and there's a lot of weird activity going on here, a lot of alleged stuff that um, a lot of people on Twitter are obsessing over, to be quite frank with you. But you actually went to Comet Ping Pong and Pizza. You actually had your boots on the ground. Tell us about what happened. So, so that's what I do, Owen, and, and thanks for having me on tonight. Um, you know, I saw a lot of people were researching Pizzagate, and I saw a lot of people were talking about it. And quite frankly, I, it had not been something that I had put a lot of effort into because it really broke just towards the end of the campaign. And as Citizens for Trump, we were working very hard to get Mr. Trump elected to make sure that we were going to stop the steal, stop the fraud operations that were going on from the Democrats. So I hadn't really paid much attention to it. Uh, after Mr. Trump won the election in his electoral landslide, I then started looking at it and I realized that Comet Pizza was really only about 30 minutes from where I live here in D.C. So I said, well, has any of you guys actually gone to, to have pizza in the place yet? And I hadn't been one of those people that was, you know, researching it and putting together the spaghetti string, you know, of, of who's who tied to Hillary, tied to Podesta and all the emails. But I said, well, look, guys, if we think that there's something going on, why don't we just go to the place? sit down, order dinner, periscope it live, and see what happens. And you did saw what happened, and you saw a kind of a strange reaction. But, you know, to me, there's even, I mean, humans have a sixth sense. There's a reason why certain environments make our hair stand up on the back of our necks. There's a reason why we get butterflies. I feel like if With you were brain. in this... Yeah, if you were in this establishment and there was serious activity like this alleged pedophile activity going on, you would kind of sense it. You would sense the weirdness of the place. Uh, just tell me what it was like when you walked in and then how kind of the staff there treated you. Weird vibe, man. Really weird vibe. And, and if anyone wants to go and look up the periscopes, I'm on Twitter at Jack Posobiec. Uh, it's just my name. And from the first moment when we stepped in, you know, every, the, the people sort of had that like, super extra happy smile and i don't mean like like you know there was a you know a nice um a greeter who was there i mean like this is your table this is going to be a great meal you're going to have a good time and then we were asking basic questions and sort of the answers that we were getting back with my friend george 
And the answers that we're getting back were very shady. They were very non-committal. Uh, at one point, we were going into the back room, and so they have this ping pong set up with a foosball table. And I was just saying, oh, foosball. It's like when I was uh, you know, in the military, we used to always play foosball in the Navy and uh, on the swim base. And I said, can we play foosball? And like, they didn't know what I was talking about. And even the owner, or I guess the manager who was there, didn't really know what I was talking about. And I said, and I like pointed to it a couple times. And I said, oh, that, yeah. Because there's a foosball table there that clearly hadn't been used in a very long time. So I then look back and see this, this curtained off area with some, uh, some chairs behind it. I could kind of see like the outline of some, some plush chairs and like a flickering light uh, as if it was candlelight. And so I said, you know, is, is that the bathroom? Because I couldn't see any other bathroom. So I go back there. And meanwhile, I'm looking around, and this is like 9 o'clock at night in a bar in D.C., and there's little kids, like, just randomly sort of walking around, going back and forth from this curtain. People are going back and forth. And, and the guy's like, oh, no, 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 you come over here to find the bathroom. And we go over, and there's this, like, I, I kid you not, uh, you can see it on the periscope, it's a secret door that's, like, kind of like a, this flag behind me where a secret door, and, like, you press it in, and then the bathroom door opens and i'm looking around I'm like what kind of place am i in right now but meanwhile uh even as they're just asking really simple normal questions you know I, I see the manager comes by he's on the phone and he's like staring at me and he's staring at the other guy and meanwhile i've only been in this place for about five minutes and then um i go and i get to the point where i think i ordered a garlic knot and it had just come to sit at my uh at my table when the manager comes back with two Washington, D.C. police officers and says, you need to leave the establishment. I am denying you service. Hmm. And was there anything that you did specifically that would have made them want to deny you service? Absolutely not. He said that he found my periscope and said, mm. you're live streaming from inside here. And and I'm not allowing I'm scared that to deny your service. And so all I had titled the Periscope was Dinner at Comet Pizza. I didn't say, you know, Pizzagate. I didn't say any of the allegations. I said Dinner at Comet Pizza. The kind of way you would say, you know, it's lots of people take pictures and put it on Snapchat, Instagram, that sort of thing. And there are a lot of people around me with smartphones. But for some reason, this guy was completely keyed in. And honestly, I think he'd been tipped off. Yeah, I mean, that's what it would sound like, especially when they've got all kinds of stuff going on on their social media, all kinds of weird pictures. I mean, we've seen this, the type of weird pictures that have been associated with this place. Uh, just final question on uh, your experience there before I move on to the next topic. Did you see any of that weird artwork? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, just even as you first walk in, you see, you see this weird sort of demonic artwork on, the, on just to the inside of the front door. And then as you're walking back, um, you can see this, this face that's just kind of on the wall above one of the tables. And it, it looks like this, this sort of, some sort of cross between a zombie and like the, you know, the girl in the exorcist, Linda Blair's character. And, and it's just freaky. Then as we walk back a little further, the wall looked like it had been recently stripped. So there's a possibility that they may have actually taken, uh, taken some of those, those paintings down. Pizzagate, it has been trending on Twitter. Certainly some weird stuff there. We'll see if that trend continues and some of the weirdness that just citizens are reporting on and breaking on social media. Uh, we'll see if that catches any ground. I want to move on to another topic, Jack, the alt-right. Now, this is something that kind of <coughs> caught, uh, caught popularity with the Trump movement, and now it's been twisted, demonized, and it's racist, sexist, homophobic, neo-Nazi. Uh, what do you think right now? What is the response that we should take to them blaming the alt-right for racism, saying the alt-right is the new platform for racism? Well, I think, I think uh, you know, the media has decided to say that uh, the only requirements for being a member of the alt-right are that you have a social media account and that you support Donald Trump. And therefore, you are automatically a, a racist and a neo-Nazi and a member of the KKK. The DNC actually specifically called me a member of the KKK when they filed a lawsuit against citizens for Trump in four states under the, uh, the KKK Act of 1871. And honestly, I think at this point, the only response we need to have is, you know what, we're Americans. You know, you guys can say whatever you want all day long. And you know what, this is our flag. 
flag. This is everybody's flag. And that's what we fought for. We're in a fight for this country and everybody in this country. So if they want to make up some new labels and start throwing it around and start labeling, well, this is okay and this is not okay. And, and you guys are all this. They asked Trump about it three times. The New York Times met with Trump today and they asked him about it three times in their, their meeting with him today. They met with him for less than an hour, brought it up three times. And even Trump was led to say, boy, you guys just can't seem to get enough of this issue. It's like you're trying to make something up. And I guess this is what they're going to do, considering that they've lost. Uh, it didn't work during the election campaign cycle. They're going to continue to try to do it, but they're doubling down. It's already a failed tactic. And what I've always said is the more they sit here and the, they blame whites for the election of Trump, the more that they're actually separating themselves from the black people, the Latino people, and the people all around the world that supported Trump as well. They've become the boy who cried wolf. They have decided to meet every charge of, of Trump or Hillary with the word racism. They will never take the moment to be introspective and say, you know what, maybe Trump was actually speaking to the millions of Americans whose jobs have been shipped overseas, for whose wages have gone down in the last 20 years, or people who are just sick and tired of all these wars we're fighting overseas. No, the people that they work for, never forget who owns the corporate media, never forget who's you know calling the shots here the fact that new york times is owned by foreigners the fact that washington post is owned by jeff bezos these are people that are paid to do a certain thing and they're paid to paid to smear donald trump and his supporters and that's all they're going to do for the next eight years uh jack posobic thank you for joining us uh, happy thanksgiving man this is the first time we've talked and actually on air since donald trump won so congratulations and cheers you too man i've heard some people say happy trump's giving Happy Trump's giving. <laughs>
because I am so smart and because I am so gifted. I am the mayor of the city of Houston because those folk that are on that monument paid the price that enabled me to be where I am today. And I give credit to every single one, named and unnamed, that's on that monument that says together we can get where we are. But the best for African Americans has yet to come. To God As soon as the unveiling began, two tribes of un-American ideologies began shouting at one another. One, the local Austin Communist Party that doesn't represent any American values. And on the other side, White Lives Matter. A white nationalist group. The same moniker they would have us peg on Trump's top advisor, Stephen Bannon. Now, one of the groups protesting over there is Red Guards of Austin. On their Facebook page, they made violent threats. So what are you guys trying to achieve here today? Me? Really? Yeah. What do you mean, you guys? Uh, Red Guard Austin. I'm not in Red Guards Austin. You're not? No. You sure about that? Wait a minute, you march in a Black Lives Matter thing with a hammer and sickle? Is that you? What are you talking about? We're just asking. Are you hearing that? Are you talking about the voice? No, we're just asking. That's Wars. your Facebook. You got it on TV right now. Right. Are you with InfoWars? Yeah. Yeah? You look just like a guy from Red Guards oh, Austin. Awesome. Yeah. InfoWars still always f you. F you. It was you. F you. All right. F you. A f you. Don't, f don't push me, man. I'm not push you. Why are you right? saying I push you? I'm just You're saying. You guys always make up. No, nah, calm down. Calm down. Yourself. Calm down. Yourself. yourself. I don't want to listen to your bullshit. Yeah. Go cry. Go cry in the Constitution. Both of these tribes would have us believe that they are supporting some kind of American ideal. But in reality, they're tribes of rabid dogs with un-American ideologues fueling their hatred of each other. While the rest of America presses on through the fog of hatred, confusion, and stupidity. John Bound for Infowars.com. I'm Margaret Howe reporting for InfoWars.com. We've looked at a recent poll and people surveyed. They say that 96% of them are hopeful now that Donald Trump is elected. We're here in South Austin. Let's go ask these trendy South Austinites how they feel about the Donald. There was a poll that 96% of the people polled said that they were hopeful of a Donald Trump presidency. Are you hopeful now that there's a Donald in the White House? Yes, I don't know that he was the best candidate for the job. However, I think he is smart enough to get the right people surrounding him to do what is needed. What do you think about Hillary Clinton? No comment. <laughs> I don't care for her at all. Well, she worked real hard. She's, I don't know, I don't uh, think much of her. I think she's, uh, she was definitely a flawed candidate. Um, I think Trump's made a good decision to move on from it, though. Do you feel hope? Hope that he's a president? I'm not sure. Hopefully, we're just going to wait and see what he's going to do. So he's changing his words. So I'm not sure how that going to work. Uh, hopefully he's just do the right decision. Uh, everybody he's he's with, all this, he's surrounding with everybody surrounding with Congress and everybody else he's he's hiring to be with him, and hopefully he'll do the right decision. Do you feel hopeful? Yes. Why? Um, it's a change. It's a change from the government that we had before. 96% of the people that were surveyed said that they're hopeful now that Donald Trump is president. Is that how you feel? I wouldn't put it like that. How would you put it? Apprehensive. I do have hopes that um, if, if Trump's doing well, the nation's doing well. So I definitely wish him all the best and hope that uh, it goes well for him. I would consider him to be a change agent. Uh, the jury's still out. I hope he does certain things to uh, change your financial system. I'm hopeful. I'm did you vote for him? I did vote for him. 96% of the people are now hopeful that Donald Trump is in office. How do you feel? 
96% of the people feel that they're hopeful that he's in office. Mm. Hopeful now. I have hope that the majority of the people that voted, um, that it transpires into some sort of, uh, you know, uh, education for Donald Trump about what uh, the focus is of the American people. I am cautiously optimistic. Did you vote for him? No. It's been a sad week, and I did vote for Clinton. I, I believe in her platform, and even if I didn't, I don't believe in his, but we're going to support him because he's our president. Right now, I just want everybody to kind of get along and, you know, everybody work together, common goal, make this country better. Do you have an opinion about Donald Trump? Uh, <laughs> I do, but I don't really want to yeah. say it. Let's just see what happens. Yeah. Let's just see what happens. Chill out. See what happens. I'm trying because we don't have any other choice right now. So I'm just trying to be positive and be supportive, but it's a little scary. He is our president-elect, so we have to support him. Yeah. You know, and if we keep being divided, it's just our, we're going to be our own worst enemy in this country if we just keep dividing each other. I just think that we all need to come together and, like, you know, Trump would say, keep make our country stronger again, but we have to start with the people first. No, I don't feel hopeful at all, actually. I feel um, a little concerned just for everyone involved, you know. I feel like people get offended really easily over, like, your opinions over it, you know? I I don't know. I mean, I know people around, like, in my school, we're all very, like, strong and opinionated. I, I go to an art school, and um, we all, like, are very against, like, his beliefs and stuff and what's going on, and I feel like a lot of the stuff that he is going for is really, like, detrimental to our generation and stuff, so. I'm hopeful that things will go well for everybody that didn't have the, didn't get to choose what they wanted, or that didn't work out the way they wanted. Is that how you feel too? She speaks for me. She speaks for you. Excellent. So we've asked a few people now how they feel now that Trump's elected. Turns out nobody thinks the world is ending, and the overall mood is surprisingly hopeful, just like the survey said. I'm Margaret Howe reporting for Infowars.com. Well, thanks for joining us on this Thanksgiving Day. Hope you had a great time with your families, and hopefully the political discourse wasn't too divisive. But before we go, I do want to mention we are listener-supported here. And just take a look at this article from The Telegraph. How does the BBC spend its $3.7 billion in license fee money? All right, here's a government-run propaganda organization that gets $3.7 billion a year to push the message of globalism and... Uh, no individuality, collectivism, mm -hmm. just all that. We get our budget here is around fifty million a year, and that's all costs. <laughs> we put exactly. that much, that's we put that much back into the whole. That's how much it costs us to run this place, and we really need your support. So go to InfoWarsStore.com. We've got amazing Black Friday deals running all this week into Cyber Monday, so be sure to check them out. Uh, promo code free for free shipping or for freedom. There you are for freedom. So that's about it. That's our show for today. We do a whole lot with very little. So please consider supporting us out there. If you're watching this on YouTube, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. Spread the link to others. Also, InfoWars.com forward slash show for the free stream of the Alex Jones show. And our show. new app. Get the app. That's right. InfoWars.com forward slash app. We're posting videos on there. If you become a member of the Prime version of the app, which is we have a free version and then a subscription version. It supports us, and also you get a lot of special reports before anybody else sees them on YouTube or Facebook or anywhere else. So please consider supporting us. Thank you very much for watching. Have a happy Thanksgiving from myself and all the InfoWars family. Be sure to join us here tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central for The Alex Jones Show, 7 p.m. Central for the InfoWars Nightly News. Thanks for watching. Good night.